Hi, I'm Benjamin Suko from the Super Screen Bros, and this is our magnet-powered block-grabbing arm. We started on this concept after we saw a YouTube video by Andrew Klein. However, this concept is not an electromagnet. Each magnet has a north and a south pole. When you have opposite sides, they attract, and if you have the same side, then it repels. Whenever you have attracting sides, the magnetic field stays within the part. However, if you have repelling sides, the magnetic field actually uh, extends outside of the part. This allows you to pick up objects nearby. This is the first prototype we made based off the YouTube video. It has 12 small magnets, 6 in each of the little pieces, and one steel insert in the middle. It had some issues with getting the whole sizes right, but we did eventually fix that. However, no matter how hard we tried, it still just was not powerful enough. Uh, we tried to improve it with some other prototypes. We made a smaller one and a bigger one. The smaller one we hoped would perform better because we reduced the plastic in the way of the magnets, and we hoped that would help because it would get the magnets closer to its target. Uh, the bigger one just had a lot bigger magnets, and so it would theoretically have more force behind it. Uh, neither of those really performed much better. They still were just not powerful enough to pick up these blocks. For anyone who's interested, here's a parts list provided by one of our team members. While working on improving our design, we decided that we should probably meet with some experts on the subject. While we were doing research in the beginning, we came across a company called MagSwitch. MagSwitch makes switchable magnets that they use in clamps and other products. We scheduled a meeting with MagSwitch's senior engineering and systems manager to discuss how we could make our design a little better. He told us that air gaps within our parts and the amount of plastic on these blocks that we're trying to pick up would make it very difficult for us to get the results that we wanted with our circle design. He then offered to give us some of their products so that we could experiment with them, and we accepted. Once we got our mag switches, we immediately began testing them to see if they would actually work for the blocks we were trying to pick up, and they performed very well. This was great news, but to get these to work, we would actually have to take them apart to get a motor to move them. This is our first design. This design was mainly to test if we could have the robot actually control it. Then we refined it to make it easier to work with and allow it to attach to a go build a servo block. The servo would allow the magnet to rotate so that it would always be pointing downward. I now have one of our builders, Noah, here to talk a little bit more about the mag switch arm. So, Noah, how did you end up powering this arm? So we ended up using a GoBuilda 30 RPM motor, and it's the Rex uh, shaft motor, because those are a lot stronger. We originally, though, wanted to use a servo. We wanted to use the torque servo, but that just didn't have quite enough power. We wanted to use it because it was uh, the servo is a lot smaller, and so it doesn't take as much space on the robot. But it ended up just not quite being able to lift up the arm. It would be able to pretty much support the arm, but just not be able to actually move it. So that's why we had to go to the 30 RPM mode. Interesting. How did you determine what length of arm you wanted? Uh, so once we decided where we wanted to put the arm, it was just a matter of saying, that okay this is where we we knew that once we put it here we knew that we wanted it to rest back here and so it just ended up just looking at it and saying okay yeah a 15 i think we use a 15 here saying that a 15 hole arm a 15 uh, one of the large these large holes 15 one of these which is 24 spacing a 15 hole uh u-channel Explaining go build systems is hard sometimes. So where, why did you put the arm where you put it? So we actually went through a couple different uh, ideas on where to put the arm. Uh, we originally were thinking about putting it like kind of more in the center of the robot. The advantage of that would be that we'd be able to reach out a little bit more on both sides. But the the problem was is that there's just really no space to put it here and so it ended up just being easiest to put it uh, right here on this side and this is it really just came to down to 
where we would be able to place it with it still working uh, at all. And so we ended up making it here, and it, and it works quite well. All right. Well, thank you for letting me talk with you about the mag switch. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.